All right, welcome everyone. We have another special guest on the podcast today, joining us from one of the Nordic land over there, one of the PLO crutches of the world. I'm just going to say Yanni, let him pronounce his last name. Yanni, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me. And and uh, yeah, no, of course. I'm glad we're doing this. What? How do you pronounce your last name? Because I'm not, I'm literally not going to try. Uh, it's Jo Kimainen. Okay, there you have it. So we have Yanni on the uh, on the podcast. And so for those of you who don't know, I know you. You know, through Party Poker, we're both sponsored by the team. Obviously, uh, we spent some time. We battled a bit online, a little bit live. Some of the stops, but give us a little background on yourself. Those that may not be familiar with you. Uh, tell us where you're from and how you kind of got into poker. Uh, so I'm from Helsinki, Finland, and I, I first started playing uh, when I was like 14, 15 with my like hockey buddies back in the days. Like we used to play a lot of poker after hockey practice. And like um, those were the times where like World Poker Tour shows were coming on television. So I kind of that was my first uh, where I started interested in the poker and uh, yeah, then we had like super small one cent, two cent games in 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 my hometown, and uh, yeah, that's how it started, I guess. Very cool. And and did you did you immediately know this was something that you wanted to go more into? Was it just kind of like a fun thing? You know, probably video games are, were prevalent as well. You were doing other kind of games, but you could actually win money. Was this something you realized right away you would be looking to do at a more serious level, or when did that sort of shift to to you saying I could be? A professional or do this for a living i think it was just like I, I was kind of bad loser so i didn't want to lose to my friends uh, so i'm like super competitive and uh yeah i just right away when we started having these games regularly i just started searching uh info about poker online and uh i think i read some books too so uh i started to improve my game and yeah i started doing well in the home games and then i couple of years later i found online poker so so give me when you say how old are you right now i'm 29 29 so when you say a couple of years older what was uh what year was that when you were when you started getting into online and sort of uh, diving down that road um so right before i i turned to 18 I, I think that was the time and 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 what was it what was it like with the your sort of culture there was it was it were a lot of people playing online was this a foreign thing where you're like oh like is gaming popular where you know what do your parents and relatives and people friends think when you're like oh i'm playing online poker and doing it more than just a hobby uh i remember it be, being really tough like obviously my parents weren't too happy about it like uh it, it was it was a struggle in the start and uh i obviously started off losing um uh, i i, I I managed to win something in the from free rolls, and I, I managed to build it up to like low four four uh, digits. But uh, I ended up going bust many times. Right. And um, yeah, I remember my my dad being super super like saying that this is probably not something you should do right now, and you should you should focus on school and stuff. But it was just something I. I wanted to get better and I felt like I have something that poker needs, like uh, I have something uh, needed in poker. Like I I, ha I felt I was pretty good at the beginning. So I just wanted to keep going and yeah. And, and, uh, and, and what, give me the, the background on why do you believe these Nordic countries, you know, Sweden, Finland, uh, Denmark, but really I, it stands out to me as Sweden and Denmark. I'm sorry, Sweden and Finland being so talented at PLO. If you look at the tournament lobby, you just see seems like super deep going building chips in these PLO tournaments, and then of course in the cash games, some of the more well known, and then the, you know Patrick Antonius, uh, some of these other you can name a, a list of players, and I'd say your name is right up there, and you're on the you know kind of uh, you've come up very quickly in regards one of the best PLO players in the world. What do you think that is? Why is there? Is it just a regional thing? The game was from an early age. Why are why are these countries so strong in PLO, uh, or maybe some of the best in the world? What what gives it that? What is that about? That that is a really good question. Uh, I've I've been asked that many times. Like, why is why is Finnish people so good in PLO? And like, to be honest, I I don't have a really good answer to that. It just seems to be the game that everybody plays here. Like, uh, if you, if you go to the casino here, it's like there's probably more PLO cash games than no limit, which is like kind of an un, un, 
it's it's not like that in Vegas or whatever, wherever, where yeah. No Limit is like the bigger game. But yeah, here just PLO seems to be the game that people love, and it's it's obviously more action. And uh, yeah, I think Finnish people just loves action and bigger variants. Right. No, for sure. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I guess that makes sense because if it, it didn't really catch in the world, like if, at a point, it seemed like PLO would take over, and that would be the main game spread uh, everywhere. But it didn't really. It's very popular, uh, but it just isn't, you know, didn't quite take over Nolan and Hold'em, at least in, in game spread and, and online cash and whatnot. And in tournaments, it's getting more popular. Uh, tell me a bit about Helsinki, because I actually have a friend, um, well, an, an acquaintance I know through a friend of mine that I met maybe 10 years ago, and he was, they call him the Finnish Tom Cruise. Yeah, it was his nickname, and I just, he was in that movie, um, the, the KK Klansman, you know, the uh, right, yeah. uh, Jasper. He was in the, Jasper, I forget, yeah. yeah. And you know, Back then, yeah. yes, very nice guy. Uh, and 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 he's always told me how beautiful the women in Helsinki are. He's always said you got to come visit. I've been to Sweden. I've been to um, Denmark. I didn't get to go to Helsinki. I've heard it. They're the most beautiful women in the world. Or some of them. Uh, tell me a bit about that. Is that true? And and give me a little bit of a, a background on Helsinki. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Through uh, all the Scandinavian countries, are we have beautiful girls and. Uh, Helsinki is a nice city. Like I, I'm born and raised here, and uh, can't say too many bad words about it. Like obviously during the winter, I kind of want to escape since it gets super cold. Yeah. So that's the only bad side that comes to my mind right now. Um, yeah, it's super super nice during the summer, and uh, yeah, people are cool. And and uh, what? Give me a, again a, like tax stuff because I know Sweden there was some weird stuff with poker. I think like they changed some of the rules for the online stuff and adjusted some things, made it a bit difficult. Is is uh, what's the gambling climate in Finland? Is it is it open or you know how, like how does the taxes work in terms of filing? Is it friendly for a poker player or is it is it difficult? Uh it's kind of so so. Like it's I mean Sweden is the worst. Like they get taxed. Uh, I'm not sure how, how their tax situation looks like right now, but I know it's worse than in Finland. So basically for us, we, we, we can play uh, tax-free online and inside Europe. So uh, that's pretty cool. But if I if I play outside a uh, European tax area, so Las Vegas, Bahamas, Australia, I, I'm going to pay taxes up to 50%. So that's pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, that's, that's pretty ridiculous. Um... But then again, like this is... Uh, this is what we pay like yearly. So uh, let's say uh, in the start of the year, I win big in Aussie Millions, and then I um, I go to Vegas and have a like bad series there. I can just write off all the losses or the tournament buy-ins, hotels, flights. So it it can be could be like first. So so I think some countries can't even write off losses or hotels or expenses. Yeah, that's true, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, that makes it basically impossible. So uh, it doesn't sound too bad. And the, the uh, tell me a bit about your, your your group of friends and sort of your crew of of uh, discussing discussing hands. Because I know in Sweden they have the gambling cabin. I kinda, I was getting confused a bit. I wasn't sure if you were maybe friendly with them or, or associated with them. I see you do have a. Um, you are telling me as well here the beast of poker. So this is something that is going to eventually be. There will be some actual coaching or, or learning, but right now there's there's blogs and is this sort of like a group that you're with, like a friends, or or what is this exactly? Uh, yeah, this is like kind of new thing we launched uh, a couple months back, and uh, yeah, right now it's uh, like there, we got like a forum with all kind of hand history discussed, and uh, we got some blogs like really really fun to read blogs. You should check it out, uh, Mister the JES. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, good with stories. So, uh, uh, but right now, yeah, we don't offer coaching yet, but it's, uh, it's coming up, I believe. And so it's pretty much just the lifestyle, uh, blogs, affiliate stuff. So you, you can find good deals and on sites and, uh, yeah, that's about it right now, but it's, it's in the beginning right now. Very cool. And how, how did you, let me, let me ask also about coaching. You, in terms of coaching, studying, and, and doing that, what do you recommend for a ratio? Like, in, in two parts that, do you actually do coaching? Like, if I, someone came to you and said, hey, I'd love PLO coaching, you know, is that something you would be open to or have you done? Or, or what does that look like for you? 
Yeah, I've done coaching for a few years now. Um, I think I signed with uh, Run It Once maybe five years ago, and I, I used to make a lot of videos there. Um, right now, I'm kind of in the contract that I I can upload a video if I feel like, but I don't. I'm not on a like monthly schedule or anything. Uh, I, I've uh, I met. I used to coach a few few guys like last year, like kind of on a weekly basis, especially on PLO to help guys move from mid stakes to high stakes. And uh, right now this year, I haven't done any coaching, but I'm kind of open to to coach if somebody wants to. Um, is that public? Like, what would be what, what do you typically do? Like, what do you think is the minimum amount of, of sessions or hours you would need with someone to make a difference? Um, it really depends. Like, I've seen so many different PLO players, and some people have really good base to work work uh, uh, to improve. So it's very hard to say how many hours is needed, but yeah, it depends a lot. And and what is some people what... might even get a lot like from like two hours session some people would find a really good help and and what is your do you have a set rate or how does that work because I'm, I'm curious i actually don't know you know i do know some players and, and do some coaching and sporadically i'm not too informed into the uh the rate or the industry obviously you're one of the top players in the game what would be if someone reached out to you for coaching what would be a typical or, or ballpark area that you would do for an hour uh around 500 per hour and if somebody wants to do uh multiple hours it's going to be 400 400 okay yeah so i I mean that puts in perspective it's a it's sort of one of those things like playing uh or or coaching right it's like for you i'm sure it's nice because coaching is cool because you get to kind of brush up and go over your own stuff and sort of you probably learn as well while you're doing it or just kind of you know hammer some stuff home but it's also there's tables out there there's games there's tournaments you can't play or you're you're passing up your ev and and uh that goes to show you that yeah you have a good ev right you know you know that you playing is valuable as well um, what do you think about Twitch? Uh, does that something, have you streamed? Would you ever stream or, and where do you, uh, kind of, what's your take on that as a whole? Um, I've done a few streams on party poker TV, uh, a few PLO tourneys, and I will be doing a couple in, in future. But, uh, to be honest, I, I haven't watched too many streams. Like whenever I play, I just focus on playing. And when I have a day off, I don't want to think about poker too much. So I think it's cool, and I, I bet it's a very, very good to good way to learn for many people. And uh, yeah, uh, I like the concept a lot. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I, yeah, I, I was it's same thing. I mean, when I'm not playing or doing something, I'm not really watching anything because it's just already it's a lot, right? You want to decompress and relax. I'm just curious if you think you know what you would think when you do when you have streamed in the past. What does it equate to when you're streaming to how many extra tables? Uh, playing let's say what what's your normal amount of tables you'll play say you're just on like a sunday grind or you're playing cash how does that differ with uh amount of tables played if it's tournament or cash games um i used to play uh, too many tables especially on sundays something like 16 and I, I i just noticed that it's like killing some EV. so i i i stepped down to like eight tables nowadays eight to ten that's that's where i'm at but it depends. Like if, if I have like a two two months, like I, I grind every day. I, I guess I can step up to like sixteen tables and have a focus. But now when I'm playing not that much, especially tournaments, so I, I think something like eight is where I feel comfortable, not missing any spots or it. So when you've streamed on Twitch, do you feel how many tables would you say would you calibrate that to adding? Let's say you're streaming for party. Like is in that case, are you only doing a couple? tables or do you do you still play your normal schedule and then do that and does that you know does it add, add one table five tables what do you think it adds in terms of streaming and, and uh, uh, I, I think every time i streamed i played four tables or maybe six like four on the on the main screen and then two on the other but yeah something like four to six should be fine to right. have enough okay. time to chat and stuff too Nice. And, and, uh, wh- where do you feel like poker is right now? Cause you've been in it. So for a while, you said you're 29. So about a decade or, or so online, How, the games obviously changed, uh, cash games. You've seen a lot of different ups and downs and, and different, uh, today's actually tax day in the U S so that's, uh, that would be, you know, April 15th, 2011 tax day. That was when they, they did the black Friday, right? That was, uh, 
when they shut down online poker for the U.S. Changed the industry a lot in terms of liquidity, player pool, all of that. What would you say now versus then? Let's say, and that was that right around when you started then, or were you playing before Black Friday then, a little before? Um, that was around the time I, I get started getting into it. I, I remember playing on full tilt back in the days, but not not too long. Right. So how how would you say now versus then? What is like how how much more difficult is the game, or what adjustments are you making uh, in terms of selection and just overall? Um, what would be something that would stand out to you? Uh, it's it's hard to hard to say since like I wasn't like I felt it was kind of tough back in the days too when I I wasn't that uh, I wasn't that uh, how do you say I wasn't that good. But then again, if I look like five years back, I felt it was way, way softer than it is right now. Um, but yeah, I, I really can't even remember how it was like 10 years ago when I was playing, grinding one, two, two, four games. And and did you ever play No Limit or were you just pretty much only PLO? I mean, because obviously you play No Limit tournaments now as well. You've had some big results on the circuit, uh, on the tour. Uh, how, when did you make this shift from were you were you a tournament originally and then some cash or were you really just cash and now tournaments how has your your uh, mixture been sent throughout your career what what breakdown percentage of each i think i started off with only only no limit like when i was 18 till like when i was 21 only yeah. three years just no limit and it was pretty much only tournaments some sit and goes too um then i think i found plo somewhere around the age of 21 and Pretty much since that, I just never get got back to no limit. I just loved PLO so much, and it was every time I uh, tried to play no limit after PLO, it just felt so boring. Uh, yeah, which is kind of normal since PLO is so much more fun and more action, more dangerous situations. And uh, yeah, I I think when I was like 24, so three years of PLO, I, I decided to have a look back at the no limit. But all, all my like pretty much all my like studying was PLO. I, I just wanted to get good at PLO, and it was very hard to like keep good like both games at very high level. So I kind of decided to choose PLO. But now the last few years has been like uh, also when I, I've been uh, playing all these like, big live events, I, I I've been starting to put some hours in uh, on my no limit uh, studying and. And so when you wake up and you're, give us a little bit of a, of a routine for you then. So what, how, let's take, um, during a week you play on Sundays. Do you, do, do you like to grind, like study and then go play? Do you just, some days you just like, all right, I'll study an hour, two or three, take the day off and, and then play the other days. Or how do you sort of break up and, and find time for studying? And is that, is that difficult for you or do you enjoy it? And it's like, cause playing and studying, obviously playing is more fun, but. How, what, what do you think has allowed you to, to study and, and work so hard on your game? Is it, do you have like a, do you have a system? How, how do you do that? Uh, I don't really have a system, but uh, I, I just feel like I never had a tough time. Like I never find the learning or studying is boring. I, I, I kind of enjoy it. And like, I just want to have like an attitude that I want to be like better player every the next day i wake up you know so even like 20 minutes reviewing hands uh watching a final table replay or something is what i what i do like on a daily basis so even now i haven't been playing much poker during this uh last month but i've been just watching a lot of like uh poker masters final table replays taking notes and players just be like a little bit more readier next time i jump in a, a game and tell me about this upcoming WPT series. We're, we're, we're of course both sponsored by Party Poker. Great, great place. I want to ask you about your signing as well. But w what about this next? Uh, let's call it seven weeks. Really, starting this Saturday, there's a, a intensive main event each week. They have its day one A, B, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, it's going to be obviously the other sites as well have some series going on. There's there's a lot of action. So how do you do? You sort of do you out. Do you map out like the the weeks coming up? Get a schedule, know exactly where you're going to play, and look at, it, or do you just kind of go with the punches? Because I mean, it's going to be arguably maybe the biggest two months in poker, probably history. I would think, yeah. right? Like this is uh, if you if you throw the WSOP and then the World Poker Tour, then some of the other sites piggyback as well. Uh, there's a lot of I mean, there's big stakes, big action, bracelets, 
WPT tournament of champions opportunities. This is uh this is gonna be it's gonna be big. I mean, are you gonna are you gonna play the whole thing through? Yeah, it's gonna be insane, and I, I I'm I'm super excited about it for sure. Uh, the schedule looks super good on um, the WPT. Um, I haven't done too too much planning yet. I, I I'm probably just gonna go day by day, and I, I'm usually just I never really plan too much like what's my next week gonna be. But I I think it would be smart to do that. I I remember like pads or uh, yeah, I think it was pads showing off some like weekly routine that wake up, do an exercise, eat, uh, do meditation, whatever, and then just two hour lesson, like studying and then, then play. Something like that is probably smart to do, especially when it's like two, really almost two months, like just a lot of grinding. So I think I'm, I will do some sort of a plan like that. And, and uh, what do you do? Where do you go when you want to take a break? Where do you go and kind of decompress? Like what's a, what's a non poker stop vacation or, or relaxation? Like I, I'm not too familiar with your region. You know, it's like, I don't know the area where guys, where you go for, for like a getaway, you know, is it, you guys have a, not like a Vegas, but you know, beach, like what's your Miami or California, where do you go to just sort of uh, decompress and get away from poker? Um, or is Helsinki just so nice? You're you're just like whatever. It's just like it's. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I move like anywhere from Helsinki, but I, I just try to find a nearest golf course. That's my place to escape. What's your uh, What's your handicap now? You shoot. You've been. You're a pretty serious golfer. Yeah, I'm. I'm starting to take more seriously every. Like I had a few years uh, off, the, but now I'm back at it, like practicing quite a lot. So I'm. I'm at seven handicap right now. That's good. That's really good. I just I got into it recently as well. It's it's a fun game, but also oh, cool. like poker. Just it, it it's actually very similar. I'd say it's the most similar to poker, where even on tournaments, right? There's like the starting day, there's cuts, then there's you know the, the payouts are 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 shaped like it. It's also very mental, and for you to go from 120 to 100, not that hard. To yeah. 90, okay. To get down to an 80, and then the, every stroke. And I, I feel poker is very similar. You know, when you look at what it takes to be the best or to be a winning poker player. At some degree, you can sort of uh, go through the motions and stay alive. But then, when if you want to really improve and be the the elite, you know, there's there's a lot of extra work. There's a lot of extra. It's not just about running good, right? You, you gotta you gotta put the time in, do some solvers, some situations, talk with people, and it's uh, it's very difficult to shave shave strokes or, or to get your ROI um, to a couple percent, right? It's a uh, it's a yeah. very very similar, beautiful, both beautiful games. Um, tell me about uh what when you got signed by party poker what was that like because that you know it's a big deal to be a sponsor player especially now right back in oh four five six seven eight there was a lot of deals if you made a final table they wanted to patch you up now it's a lot more i feel it, it's it's a more exclusive uh situation and and how did you get approached and and get an ambassadorship because it's uh yeah it's it's great i mean it's it's a big deal it's fun so how did uh where did that come about how did that get get started um, I think, I think it's been two and a half years around now, uh, since I got signed, um, uh, it was kind of out of nowhere. I, I was playing a lot of live poker, uh, like three years back. And, uh, I was, I think I had like a pretty good year and all of a sudden I just got, uh, uh, they approached me and, uh, asked if I am interested in doing this. And, uh, yeah, obviously it was pretty no brainer decision. Uh, I've always been a big fan of party poker and yeah, I, to be honest, like if, if poker stars would have offered something similar, I would have had to consider it, but consider about it a few times, but party poker is just super, super happy to be part of it and doing things right. Respecting players. Yeah, I think we, we can agree. We're in the, we're on the, we're on a great team in the right spot and it's uh it's an interesting time in the industry for sure. So yeah, it's, it's nice yeah. to be aligned here. We, uh, looking at the, the Hendon mob, I love to look back. This is the, the site looking where your first live every, like I guess every single guest that plays live poker, uh, they have final table, their first event. I think it's 98% or 7%. So, you know, you, you do final table, your first couple. Yeah. Do you remember this? Was this your first ever you know, what brought you here? Were you already playing online a lot and doing well, or was this sort of a, a big, big swing and a big, big sweat to, to come in and play this one live? 
Oh, I remember this uh, Italian poker tour. I think my friend won a package, uh, qualified online for the main, and then I just decided uh, I wasn't. I think this was yeah first uh, first time I was abroad to play poker. So yeah, first ever. I was super nervous. I remember uh, obviously this. I love the San Remo. I went there a few times in a row. Uh, just nice atmosphere and uh, pretty nice like soft field. Yeah, look, I mean, it was uh, you versus the Italians there. I mean, 1 through 20, it's basically, uh, it was every, you were the only, uh, basically the only foreigner in the mix there. And and so did that get you, uh, you had a couple couple results. I mean, you, right away you get a decent score. I mean, was this something, you? so you've been traveling since then. Did you did you put more attention in the live in a particular year or versus online? Because I see you had uh, got a couple good scores. And, you know, even this year you were right there in Australia you know, battling, getting deep, having some some nice runs and, and pretty consistent. There was this party million here where you got third place. Uh, wh- what was a uh, what was your what was the amount of live versus online you were playing throughout this period? Like, is there any time where you just strictly were live or strictly online, or were you always pretty balanced? Uh, I would say I've, I've always been pretty balanced. In the be- beginning, it was all about like uh, playing qualifiers online. Uh, I remember there was like a tour on Europe called European Masters, 1500 buy-in main event. So I always tried to qualify for that. And I managed to do that a few times. I'm not sure if I managed to cash in the main events. I think you can find it there. But yeah, those were the times I just didn't consider myself as a live player. I just I just fired satellites and uh, made a few trips when I was 18, 19, 20. And then, yeah, mostly mostly online back back then. And what what is it the Helsinki? Is there a what, how are the casinos there? What, what is it? A, is there a bunch of casinos? Is there only a few? Do they do do they do tournament series? Like what what's it like there? Uh, we actually have only one casino, and uh, yeah, uh, it's the, like the gambling law is pretty pretty strict. So there's only one casino owned by the uh, the government, and uh, yeah, we have a tournament weeks like three three uh three per year uh one is like a high roller series which is like only 20 players f- fields 5k plo 5k no limit uh sometimes 20 20k super high roller but only only local guys so not not a huge value in plo especially and 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 what's happening with covid around you right now like speaking in helsinki i just uh, i'm just curious is it because i saw sweden was sort of taking a very um nonchalant stake stance on it just kind of experimenting or saying you know what we're gonna let it ride and i actually saw an article popped up about how some of the nordic uh countries were giving sweden look at them like a bad like it was affecting how they were perceived but what's your take on it like on the the whole situation are you do you feel that helsinki is under control is it does it change your day to day and and how how is uh is sweden like is that sort of a stigma now is that a big deal and that within the region um I think yeah, Helsinki and Finland. Uh, it's it's pretty under control now, and uh, it, it, the the rules were pretty strict. And uh, um, the ru- rules, like let's say in golf course, you you couldn't uh, you had to put the, with the flag on and stuff. You couldn't touch uh, stuff like that. Small things. Uh, I think it's been taken care of pretty well in Finland. Um, I'm not sure. I've heard it's it's pretty bad right now in Sweden, and. Uh, People haven't like taken it too too serious, but yeah, in Finland it's it's pretty good and it's getting better better uh, daily. That's good. And what's your what what's your thoughts about live poker? I mean, the in terms of the online versus live bracelet thing. So, do you believe that winning a like a World Poker Tour online or WSOP would that have the same validity to you in your mind if someone wins a bracelet or a tournament? Um, because you could argue that it, online's tougher, even probably it's harder to win than live. Most, I mean, I think most would agree with that. What What are your thoughts on that in terms of the legitimacy? And and do you think they should be handing out bracelets and World Poker Tour uh, tournament champions for online? Um, I don't. I don't have a strong opinion on that. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't take anything off if uh, if somebody wins a or whoever wins the World Poker Tour main event. It's obviously nothing off from that but yeah maybe it's a little bit more glorious when you win it live 
Yeah. There's something nice about having your friends there and just like the whole, you know, the whole feeling exactly. of it all. But online, listen, you got to adapt with the times and we're in a, we're in a bizarre time in the world. And I think it's good that these, the major sites and, and are, are partnering and, and finding ways to, you know, people want to play, people get bored, people, people are looking to, uh, to be entertained and also compete. So I think it is a good fit. Um, where you, would you have been in Vegas right now? Do you go every summer? Yeah, I think I haven't missed, uh, missed any summer since I turned 21. So, yeah. Yeah, that was, that would, that same here. So it is, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bit bizarre. What's your favorite stop, uh, throughout the year? Where do you like to go? What's the best place for you in terms of, uh, series for, for poker? Uh, right now it's very tough between Aussie millions and, uh, millions in the Bahamar. The Bahamar is kind of my favorite since they have such a good golf course next to the, the casino and, uh, tennis courts and a lot, I love Bahamas, but yeah, Aussie millions, Melbourne, that's very, very good too. So it's very hard to choose between those two. Yeah, those are those are definitely great venues. Yeah, I think I think that was a decent over or under right now. If they'll have the the November series for party poker, but I don't think so. I think I I don't think we'll see twenty twenty live poker most likely, but uh, we'll see. I, I I'll tell you what, there's the people that are uh, when you see these masks in the 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 glass at the casinos. There's just something about it. It seems uh, it's a bit crazy to me. You know, it's like it's it just seems like the last place you'd want to be at the moment is a is a casino and and touching chips and all that. Um, what about, uh, what about, uh, relationships, children? I mean, you're, you're young, you're 29. Do you have, uh, is that something you've thought about? Do you want to have kids? Do you, have you, have you, has that been something you've, you've put into, uh, to, to look into yet or just, just kind of playing it by ear? Mm, yeah, definitely. Like it's not right now in, uh, in my mind, but yeah, maybe in next five years. Yeah, sure. So you're open to it. Yeah. I think I, 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 the thing I'll say too, is the people in poker, like yourself, I, 29, I mean, it's young. It's, it's in poker. It's sort of not old, but you're getting to that next phase. Like I'm 33. I feel pretty, pretty old for the industry, especially with the black Friday, you know, us poker. So it's not really the, the system of poker seems to be slowing down. Like there's not as many young people that are getting into the game, at least from what I can see. What do you, what do you believe poker needs to do right now as an industry to sort of, uh, to maybe shift and, and find a way to get people more back into the game. Cause it does seem like, I mean, pre COVID the live numbers were up, but online seems to be, seems to be a bit difficult. It seems to be a challenging, challenging one. There's also more regulations. There's more rules and, and just sort of stipulations and, you know, the IT transfer stopping and uh, segregating places. Uh, what, what would you be, if you were able to do something, what would be the thing that you think you could spark, online poker more right now like but you've noticed what would be something that would be uh beneficial for the industry oh another tough question uh um, you're 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 in the nordic you're like uh we, we in the state i know you're a thinker you're your plo one of the main guys i gotta put you on the spot man i'm not just giving you we're not just laying <laughs> up here we're gonna have some tough stuff here yeah i need to think about it like it's it's not that easy to answer in english Okay. All right. There's a, you can use that one time. I'll give you that, that, uh, translation thing. I see the English is perfect, man. Don't, you can't play that card. I know you know how to articulate. Um, all right, well, let's talk about this. What, let's go to something that's a sort of debate, real names, not real names. What do you think about the real names? Cause this is a big topic in the industry and something parties really gone on the limb experimented for. What do you think about this? Do you prefer for you? Cause I guess you're already, your name already shows at the table regardless, same as mine, but just think about it from a from a objective perspective. What do you believe is better for for the game to, for people to show their real name or not? Um, I, I think it's it's better with the real names. Just kind of makes it feel a little bit more safer and like uh, fair fairer. I don't know. So yeah, I, I I think real names is way better. And and what about HUDs? Because also Party took a stand here and, and decided not to have them. W w how much? is the head the huds heads up display do you use those across when you play on other sites were you upset when party got rid of them do you think it's good or do you where do you stand on that issue um i've never really I, i've had hud uh, on plo but uh to be honest i'm never been really good at using it so it, it's been there but i might have checked one free bet stat like one every once every 30 minutes but 
so yeah I, I i don't really care about like i think it was a good uh when party banned those so since i i know people that uh hot is like super important to them and they can't barely play without it so frost yeah you there what's that i you froze for a second maybe at a call or something oh. it, you were saying about the huds that you know some people um that use it but yeah I, to your point even if you have it and it's now it becomes a matter of are you using the hud the best so forget about the poker and whatnot now it's like if a guy can use the hud better and i think that is intimidating right. to uh to players yeah right? it even is even sure. myself like i use it but i'm sure you know, i knew i'm not using it as like a jungle man or someone that's like just like you know they're, they're gonna be p- picking off your turn bet percentage stat yeah. like you know doing elaborate work with it so i, I do think that uh it's probably net net beneficial and 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 uh is good so uh, that's i was curious so if that's something in plo do you think it's used more or less for huds is it more important or less important than um, knowing hold them? Like, like in in cash games like let's say high stakes it's like kind of you know your opponents it's not going to be too many new faces or you just pretty much played so much versus everybody so you don't really need a hard to know how much they three bet or fold to three bet you know so i wouldn't say it's that like it's for sure more important in like tournaments when where there's massive fields. But then again, it's so hard to get like a big sample on anybody. But I know there's people who like buy hand histories and you know when they have now they have a huge uh sample on everybody. So that kind of scares me since I, I never used to hide in the tournaments. Yeah. And and PLO, you are regards one of the game's best. What would you say what attributes do you think are put you in that category or what 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 makes you be a successful winning plo player give me a couple things is it work ethic studying is it your your sixth sense your you know do you make board like what is your superpower in plo and and i know you're a humble you're a humble man but give us give us what makes you you know be able to make run at once content how are you one of the better players in plo don't give away the seek everything. Just give me like a little like, <laughs> you know, hint at what, what you think is uh, why you are successful. Uh, I mean, got to say it's a hard work. A lot of hours putting in uh, into study PLO. And second, I, I think very important is the net, network we have uh, within the Finnish uh, PLO players. There's a lot of great, great PLO players. Uh, Jeans, uh, Lars Luzak, uh, E27. And all of us are pretty close friends. So every time... Or not every time, but if if I face like let's say super tough spot in a big uh, cash game pot, I might just you know show this spot to all of these guys who I are considered the best, and then I I can see like four different approach or you know how these guys see the spot, and that takes you a little bit further when you when you you know everybody sees uh, these spots differently, so it's very helpful to see different approaches. And and what about ego and poker? I think this is one of the bigger things. People just want to believe they're right or they, you know, that they they know what's best. But is that something that is that easy for you to look at a hand and then talk to someone and say, okay, you know, that I was doing it this way, but I think this is better. Uh, do you do you have any ego really, or is this a uh, is this something that you are super open to to learning and and changing and, and seeing what's going on? Because it's tricky if you do something one way for a while and then you just immediately like. For some people, I would say, is that is that hard for you, or do you just like, okay, no, this is what we thought was right, and now this is better, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it what I think is best. Well, now, the, no, now I, I don't think I've had any, I don't think I have any problems with that. Like, if uh, somebody says this is this is better, and they can prove it, or, uh, yeah, uh, no problem with that. And like, E27, which I think is number one PLO player pretty much in the world. Who uh, which, who is that? E E twenty seven, okay. Uh, yeah, Ellis Ellis Patterson. Uh, so yeah, every time he he says something, I'm just pretty much like, yeah, that has to be the right thing. He he's just like the guy. I've I seen him. I've seen. So he most. he's been playing some of the the big PLO events, right? Uh, like on uh on party in particular. I'm sure everywhere. What 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 separates? Like what's some of the things he's doing differently? Again, not 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 that's a secret, but what what are some of the things that you would say even separates him from you or, or to make him the best, the best overall. What is, uh, what does that mean in PLO? What is he, is it just stack sizes and maneuverability knowing all that? It just, 
you know, the, I get it that if you're the best, there's, there's I, many things, but what, it, what in PLL would encompass something that maybe someone doesn't even think about that he does, does very well. Like just one thing that comes to my mind when I think about his like play, uh, is that he just plays his a game pretty much always. I never seen him or never is the wrong word, but like I super, super rarely see him make any questionable play. And even though he's slept like four hours and has a big day too or whatever, he just is in there with his A game, you know. Uh, there's a lot of really good uh, good guys on top of the PLO game, but you see some weird and, you know, bad plays every now and then. But I just think this E guy is a robot. He just, he's just, you know, playing A game every day. So, but yeah, you know that, him that's kind of, yeah, a lot. Yeah. yeah, very good. Well. So he's not you can confirm not a robot but robotic is in he's very he's very <laughs> robotic, solid yeah. standard yeah okay yeah so that's just the thing that comes to my mind yeah plo tournaments tell me a little bit about if you're at home and you're, you're interested in plo because i think it is something that kind of as you said once you start playing some plo it's very difficult i've been in cash game private games where we try a round to each and it very quickly goes to just plo you don't want to play plo cash and then play around to hold them and then you know it gets kind of boring right like it's plo is just more, definitely more exciting definitely more collisions more action um what would be the someone that's interested in plo how would you say to start would you recommend a beginner to start in plo cash or tournaments uh, cash for sure uh plo is kind of it's kind of complicated came game already and when you add icm and you know all the tournament stuff it's just super kind of it's too complicated to start with so i would just start with cash game and learn the basics what and and we i asked you this before we started quickly but i want to understand plo8 and where do you believe that game how different is that than pot limit omaha i have a funny story about this recently one of my good friends he was playing on a tournament and he started sending me hands. This was maybe four days ago, five days ago. And he was like, yo, there's an error in the software. He's dead serious. And he sends me a couple of hands and the plot, pots were split. And I actually couldn't figure it out because like I wasn't even, I just was doing something else. And like, I was like, oh, that's obviously wrong. Like why did, and I didn't even think, cause I, I thought like I saw you get that pot and then I was like, oh, and I sent it in. And they looked at it and like, oh, he's playing PLO8. And I was like, man, you know, like that's funny. Like some people probably like they're playing, they don't even know. Um, but it's a different game. I mean, it's the same. Some principles are the same. And it's obviously, does a P great pot limit Omaha player translate to a great pot limit a PLO8 player? Or is it completely different? Um, I would say it's kind of good to have a solid base on your PLO. And I wouldn't say it's that it, it shouldn't be that hard to transform. But to be honest, I, I played so little PLO8 that... I, I wouldn't consider myself as a good PLO8 player. So this PLO8, this is, this is, I love it that uh party is throwing this in there. So if we look here, this is um right here, right into it this weekend. This is going to be from the 18th of this month. So July all the way down to September. It looks like uh 17th. I thought it was September 8th. I think they did make a change. They didn't want to compete with, uh, they didn't want to overlap on WSOP's main stuff. So yeah. anyway, this is a this is a pretty cool schedule. Saturday, Sunday, day one A, day one B, and then you know if you make it through, um, you got Monday, Tuesday sweats and, and some stuff. But they kick it off with a PLO eight. So will you will you fire in that? Do you feel like you're, you know, are, do you think you would be a winner in a thirty two hundred WPT PLO eight field, five hundred K guarantee? Yeah, I most likely I'm gonna flick in the 3200 and study the game at the same time i'll play um it's uh it's for sure like a kind of interesting concept the high low and you need to be be, you need to be more like cautious when you play that than just regular plo yeah you don't want to get three quartered scoop you're going to get scooped right put in some weird spots what is uh what about about other games do you play mixed games do you play do you play short deck do you play any of the other games no, I short deck has been on my list for quite a long time that I need to practice, but I never, never uh, find a time for that. And yeah, none of those, uh, none of those eight games uh, or mixed games, I haven't played any. 
And is it for you, is it more about you just want to uh, put yourself in and put the time and really be dominant? You just don't want to be flicking in and, or do you think it would just take away from your, from, from mastering where you're at? Cause I mean, listen, poker, it is a beautiful game in that sense that even yourself in PLO, it's like, there's all, like you said, you're learning every day. That's sort of the goal. You want to get better than you were the day before. Uh, is it just kind of one of those things where you realize that to, to dive into these other games, it's not just like, all right, I'll do an hour here and there. You got to really put in time and effort. Is that, is that really what it comes down to? Or is, is it just a PLO you believe is the most profitable game currently? Do you think it's the best game to be playing in the, in the climate and poker right now? Yeah, that's, I think that's it then, but maybe now it's kind of in the PLO, it's super rarely that there's a high stakes game running. So maybe this would be a good spot to, you know, step, step, to, uh, step off from PLO a little bit and uh, try to find time for short deck. But yeah, I, I would just I just want to spend many many hours practicing before I hop into any games. Yeah, you don't want to. You, yeah, you don't want to just be uh, donating. You're you're a nice guy, but you sure you do do some charity stuff. You you don't want to just uh, give it away. Uh, give me a typical day. What is a typical day for you? Um, say today you didn't have a podcast, or say tomorrow. What are you doing tomorrow? How does your day look on a, on a daily basis in terms of working out, uh, study? Um, give me give me your typical day. Typical day right now would be, yeah, I try to have one exercise or one round of golf. Uh, golf and tennis are the number one things right now during the summer. So either a round of golf or two hours tennis is flicked into everyday schedule, like half and half, three, three golf rounds for tennis or whatever. And then just uh, trying to spend as much uh, time with my girlfriend now when I'm, I'm home and not traveling around these tournaments. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not really uh, have right now. There's not too many games, like I said, on PLO. So it's super rare. Like today we had some 500, uh, 50, 100 games on party, free tables, which was kind of surprising to see. I, I don't think I played single hand high stakes PLO in like two months. But yeah, it's right now it's not no poker scheduled before this uh, uh, Saturday that the WPT starts. And, and for you though, with, it's a bit different on which, which part of the world you're in than being obviously, uh, there's basically two different schedules. You can either be like the North America or European. So do you, how do you sort of work that in with sleep? Cause it's late nights, right? I mean, these, some of the tournaments are ending at what, four or five. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's probably the number one reason that I'm not grinding tournaments like a lot, even though there would be like, let's say this WPT, I'm probably not playing. Uh, like the whole schedule since it's like kind of during the summer i i don't want to be in the office like from 9 p.m till 6 a.m and then just wake up at 3 4 p.m so i gotta say this time zone is super bad for tournaments and uh you know the summer is super short in finland so i just want to enjoy and play golf instead of you know playing all night and you know kind of ruins your social life too yeah, that makes that makes a ton of sense. And uh, will you uh, for travel? So, what about uh, with with the? Uh, are you basically just saying you're staying put? Then are you not gonna? Are you until kind of COVID gets more clear? Is there anything you have coming up to move, or you're just you're just sort of locking down and 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 uh, being a homebody for the next next while? Yeah, that would be the plan before things get more settled. Yeah. And, and how about your girlfriend? So is that, so how is, how do you balance with the relationship in poker? Is it something you take full days off? Cause I think that's one of the unique things about poker players, obviously having freedom, having time, you can sort of make your own schedule. Uh, is that something that you feel is beneficial in that sense? Or is it sometimes tough? Cause you can't really plan if there's a good game popping or plans aren't really, you know, you don't know, right? Like it's not like, Oh, well for sure I'm doing this or for sure I'm doing that especially playing online, how do you sort of, uh, do you set times or if a game's amazing, you're going to stay up and play? Like, how do, how do you juggle that? Um, yeah, it for sure. It takes a lot of understanding from my girlfriend to realize that I, I will like, there's been, there's been days that we've, we've had some dinner plans or whatever. And like just amazing 200, 400 PLO pops up and it's like, you know, she understands. It's like, I've, I've told her it's like once every six months that happens. And, then I just, you know, I got to play. And uh, 
I, I haven't like if if we had some bigger plans than the dinner or whatever I, I I'm just skipping the games but yeah it takes for sure a lot of understanding to that sometimes the plans could be ruined if if there's a choosy game and and when you say you're at the office what does that mean you got is that where you're is this like a group of guys are you doing is this for poker are you doing business investments and and research what what goes on at the office or is this just where you like to play separate the house from like you know relax whatever and this is where you kind of grind or focus and, and what does that office mean for you and, and and is it a group of people who is that yeah so uh, like six years ago I, I just came up with this random idea with uh i think it was me alice and a few other guys so i just came up with this idea that we maybe since we are all playing like every every night at our homes so maybe we should rent an office play there spend some you know uh whenever there's a football match, whatever, ice hockey, just, you know, have a place to go, like man cave, you know. And, uh, yeah, six years ago, we rented a small office, maybe 25 square meters, super small. We had a TV and everybody has their, had their setup there. And uh, now, like six years later, we, we have pretty big office and we have like 10 guys here where we, it's a place to go. Like right now, it's super quiet. I'm, I'm alone here. Uh, but it's nice to have a place where we can study together and, uh, you know, play, spend, like watch, watch soccer or whatever, spend time. And, and who's your, who is your team? Who do you support? Do you guys, uh, cause Helsinki, Finland's not known for their soccer league or football, I guess you call it, but is it, uh, there are some teams yeah. there, local teams that you support, or is it more, you pick a team in, in the, in a different league and, and, and go, who's your, who do you root for? um yeah i don't follow soccer at all like you said we, finland is pretty pretty bad in soccer uh so hockey is the thing hockey hockey is uh we have some we have one uh hockey team which is playing in the uh in the khl with the russian russian team so that's kind of high level hockey and uh yeah the arena is right next to the office and yeah you go to some games you go to games and check it out yeah for sure yeah, it's interesting. I guess it's uh, it's just completely cultural. That that makes sense. That it's not very popular there. What? A, who are some of the best from what you've seen? Who do you think right now you would throw in the conversation as the, some of the best tournament players in the world? Let's take No Limit Hold'em, just because it's a little more popular and people, you know, there's more of those going on. Um, you go, you see waves, you see heaters, you see some of these names that get on these crazy runs. But who do you believe currently in the game would you throw into sort of the top tier? Is there any people that stand out? um yeah a few few people pop up to my mind um timothy adams for sure uh he would be in my top three if i would have to pick top three here uh daniel torres i like i said i i've watched a lot of pretty much all the like 5k plus final table replays and you know i've seen a ton of hands played uh, in uh under the big pressure in the high stakes final tables and yeah these two guys just seem to play solid every time and make no mistakes. Yeah, that's a that's a good list. I, I would I would say those are uh, pretty spot on. What is your ultimate goal with poker? And just sort of, do you have a number in mind? Is it you just as long as you're loving the game? Do you sort of have a? Is there a business you would want to get into or segue out of poker? um or on the side as a supplement what would you be doing if it wasn't poker or do you have any businesses you want to kind of invest in or you're, you're doing already um to be honest poker is pretty much all right now I don't, I don't have any like anything that interests me that much that i would like to focus on it more i mean golf is but i know it's not kind of it's i won't be able to or it would be like super super long path to play professional golf and like you can't you don't get paid anything any like if you play professional in finland the tournaments are so small you can't really you can barely cover the expenses so and obviously i'm not aiming to a pga tour or anything but yeah golf is something that is my passion right now uh other than go uh poker so yeah i don't know and and now you see your family it was difficult at first with poker but now they see they know you're, you're successful you're a winner you're 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 organized you're not a degenerate like you, you you know you got your stuff in order and they see you're sponsored by party poker what was that a big deal when you said hey i'm sponsored by a, a site like was that was that pretty 
were they very excited about that or at that point or were they, they content with what you had chosen and in, in the path you're on yeah obviously it's been easier uh year by year when they start to see some results and stuff i don't think they like w when i get sponsored by party poker I, I don't think they really realized what it what it is really mm -hmm. so but yeah they, they've been just super happy that i i'm able to do what i like every day and yeah and um do you do you think that moving forward with with uh with poker how important you think it is the u.s comes back online do you feel in 10 years let's say five years from now what's your prediction about about poker and in the industry because there is stuff about solvers the same time what short deck comes out party poker gets rid of huds it seems like it's just a constant battle right like this happens and that happens and they do this they do that do you feel poker is got a positive trajectory or do you think that we're going to be in a, a difficult time to keep the game um fun uh energetic active because like it's one thing if you put the work in right yourself you're studying you want to you want to do coaching you want to review hands and then there's the other side of it like at some point you know when supercomputers happen or like look at what happened with backgammon you know these games get solved or yeah chess. like you know chess isn't that appealing because if a guy's better than you, he's going to beat you. Right. Like, if, and back game in two, it's like the game is solved. And in theory, it is like some of the, you know, it, and it's still, you have to have a great mind and talent to be able to execute. And there is still luck in that, but where, where do you stand on this in terms of the future of, of uh, poker? Are you optimistic? Uh, it's, it's super hard to predict. I, I'm kind of optimistic, but it also scares a little bit that all these, like you said, uh, artificial, uh, or how do you say? Yeah. Uh, but it, yeah, anyway, yeah uh it, it's scary with all these solvers out there and uh computers bots everything uh but yeah i, I want to be optimistic and kind of go year by year I, I i have no clue what's what it's gonna be in five years and i haven't even thought about it that's yeah it's uh it is it's a it's a bit down the line right it's uh it, it's hard to say it's good to be informed i guess something that we just we don't know and we'll keep an eye on um what uh if you were to win the it, when you've won some you've had some good scores let's just take give me your most the most meaningful tournament result let's say something that was a bankroll wise kind of changed the, your trajectory or was just uh impactful at what point was was something that really stood out and that you remember as your most meaningful uh tournament result Oh, I don't. I don't actually think I've had any or too many like big tournament wins. I've had few like third place finishes for a lot of money. Um, but I think I I won back in the days. So I won uh, one of those poker European Masters thing, one K buy in. I think it was like, I'm not sure. I, it should have been in Portugal. Yeah, seventy five. Sure oh yeah, so that's probably. I mean, that was my first major major win, so that felt super good. And after that, I get sponsored by uh, a Finnish Finnish poker site. So yeah, I gotta say that was one of those big wins of my career. And then it looks like you know you were you had another couple of good scores. And then what about that third though? I mean, that's a significant difference because you go from you hadn't had a hundred k score and you were still pretty consistent, good results, and for the buy-ins. But then that that five hundred thousand dollar pop, what was that like? Hitting a uh, hitting a, hitting that type of score, it's over five hundred. Like yeah, it's big, five hundred k. And there's uh, there's, he, he, would you say he's one? What, how do you pronounce his name? Yuri? Uh, who? The, the oh, Ilari Saham, yes. yeah, yeah. He uh, he's definitely regarded. I mean, is he still is he still very active? I don't know what his poker. I haven't heard much about him, but he's definitely one of the bigger names and in poker yeah for sure i mean he's still around and uh plays a little bit lower than he used to but uh yeah legend for sure what comes to poker uh, finish poker poker guys and what was that like getting getting down to three and, and getting that 500k score was that uh were, were, do you remember it as like being stressful or fun or because at some point you get on those runs it's it's rare to have 500k scores right i mean you play you, it's just so different than cash game whereas tournaments you know you you have that that chance for such a bank with such a low risk, right? The ROIs are big, but cash games are more consistent. When you hit a 500K score, do you hop up stakes? Do you buy, do you, do you get a car? Like what happens when you hit that type of score for you? 
Oh, that was, yeah, that's definitely one of my most memorable final tables of my career. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, I just happened to, when I think about the final, I, I remember I was huge chip leader, three left. I think I had like 75% of all the chips and I managed to <laughs> screw it up and got third. So obviously not that nice of a memory, but then if you look at the, the score, uh, it was, it's still, I think, one of my biggest uh, tournament caches. So it was, a, it was a wild final table. I, I got in short when I was like, it was like nine left. And then I just happened to build a huge stack, get in the chip lead. And it was a wild uh, final. We, there were some, uh, uh, some drinks, like Ilari started to drink uh, during the dinner break of the final table. And, and we had some fancy hats at the table and that, that was a, uh, that was quite a show. Definitely, definitely a good memory. What What do you think about in terms of tournament strategy? Where do you Where do you fall on in terms of yeah? You know, because it's funny. A lot of times it seems like the the short stacker. If you're in six, seven, eight, and nine, they can just you know go on to win it and being alive. But then there's so much weight put on having that lead. You know, bubble play, building a stack. You see guys like Alex Foxen and uh, Adamo Adamo. And I mean, really a lot of great players. They really go for it. You know, they put the pressure on. They ship it. They, they, they put the ICM pressure at the different stages, the pay jumps, the final table bubble, and then the final table. Where do you, your psychology, how do you kind of fit in with that? Do you feel like survival? And it's sort of like, you know, obviously you want to make good decisions and whatever the best decision is. But if you were to give your game style, do you think you kind of press it a bit and try to get that big stack? Or do you, do you rather sit back and sort of see what happens knowing that anything can happen when you reach a final table, literally? You know, the blinds get condensed. It's like, 10 to 40 blind stacks, right? So it's like, where do you put the weight in terms of having that big stack or uh, just kind of being surviving? And of course the answer would be uh, give what the table gives you and take your spots. But like, which side do you think makes, uh, do you find to be more beneficial in poker for tournament poker? Um, I think especially in PLO, it's very, it's more uh, important to be on the aggressive side and uh, build a big stack in the bubble since it's like, so different than in no limit like in plo you can people can't even go broke with aces which is like it's pretty sick you know in no limit pe even though it's a bubble people can you know call it off with aces kings you know strong holdings but plo when you have a big stack and it's a bubble it's just like you can play any four cards and gain a lot of chips during the bubble and and the same goes on when it's like in the final and somebody's super short people if you look at the 50k uh 50k PLO Masters final, you see like aces being folded pre since it's like it's 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 impossible to play when the ICM pressure is high and you have like rainbow aces since the equities run so close. Talk to me about this a little bit because I think this is really fascinating and, and and most people aren't even wouldn't really put that into uh, to to put that into perspective. So give me a scenario. Let's just take uh, 3200 WPT because that's coming up. Um, you know, let's, let's take that. We could pull out the structure sheet and really get into it. But let's just let's just look at. I believe it's the uh, Parliament next week, right? So this one, I know you'll be you got that on your calendar for sure. Yeah. So let's say it's a thirty-two hundred, one mil guaranteed. You're getting near the bubble. What would be a? Tell me a scenario where you would fold aces when, like, how many off the money would you consider it if they're and how many blinds? Um, and, and, and what stack size might you just flat and go to a flop versus just like pot getting it in, say you're, you know, give me an example, like one or two off the money or like, you know, five or three or four or five off the money. Cause these will be pretty good sized fields, right? They're guaranteeing. This is what three thirty two hundred, So 300 person field, yeah. let's say 45 cash. There's 50 left. Like what, what point are you just kind of like, all right, I'm going to make sure I cash. And, and cause I mean, if you really think about it and as you say it out loud, this is where it's all the more reason to try to build a stack because you can just, just really pick up chips in these uh, bubble spots. Yeah. I mean, it's very difficult to say in a spot like that. Where this is what uh, today's about. You know, we're difficult decisions. This is not a layup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I want to put yeah. you on the spot, ask easy. you about the world, the changing and, and poker and then difficult, you know, I want to know what you yeah. think. Yeah. Doing, you're doing a great job putting me <laughs> in the spots. Um, Oh, so let's see. Just it, give me one example that might not be, that might not seem logical, like where you would just pitch aces, open folder, just call and then just get rid of it on most flops or something. Like 
let's say a spot where you open you open the cutoff with 35 bigs you open with ace ace king ace ace king eight rainbow and the button the big stack three bets you and small blind gets it in for 25 bigs it's like it would be the spot where i'm not i'm not getting in there three way with rainbow aces if it's like three off the money or whatever so it's just not worth gambling when you when you're kind of guaranteed uh, uh, to get in the money by just playing cautiously. You don't need to get it in with like slight procedural favorite. So you're saying if you open thirty blinds in theory, depending on a few things, but you would open a three bet on the button and then the four bet jam for twenty five blinds, and you're very close to the money. You would pit. You, you're saying you could justify folding ace ace king eight there. Yeah, this was just really fast. Uh, yeah no no i know like, obviously like but it, it's it's a scenario where I, I would at least like be super tempted to fold obviously it's when you're playing it it, it should not you know uh affect your thinking when it's a like 1k or 50k tournament but yeah that's and also like where there's a spot in this the 50k i mentioned uh i believe the shortest stack had like nine bigs and this guy who had aces on the small bind I think he had some sort of rainbow aces. Um, no, he was in the big blind and he had like 30 bigs and the small blind, the chip leader opens the pot and he just folded from the big. I'm not saying that's like probably a good fold, but I would say call is probably the way to go here and not three bet to nine. And this guy can just, you know, house play you and you don't want to get it in when there's one short stack and the bubble is 137K. Right. Right, so you're saying that in that scenario, instead of folding, you could take a flop and then then because because right, at the yeah. same time it's scary a guy covers you, but there's there's a lot of boards where the guy who's raising the absolute trash in that spot he's gonna first of all he's out of position he's got an inferior hand and and then he still has to decide to just like go insane you know if it comes like whatever ace two three or ace two seven and he's got just total air is he just gonna go clip it off right like so. You know, it's uh, yeah, it's but interesting though. That's I think that's why PLO tournaments are so fun though, because it's like there is so much extra like and 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 what you're saying, I don't think many people would really consider. You know, it's like it's even like of course people want to make the money, but maybe they do it for the wrong reasons or they're they're not thinking about it right. And there's a lot of work, there's a lot of spots, there's a lot of situations, yeah. new scenarios, and it's it's a very interesting interesting game. Yeah, the, I, I just remember one fun spot in the in the uh, in the live tournament we had in finland 5k i think it was the buy-in and it was in the exact bubble six left and five paid and there was mm-hmm. like uh, my friend and another good friend were chip one and chip two in the final and there was one guy with like three bigs or whatever and the chip leader guy opens and then the second stack three bets to like you know 10 bigs and he has like 20 20 bigs behind yeah and then the chip leader who has like 100 bigs he just shoves and he, he's joking, like, you can't even call it off with aces here. And uh, the other guy is just, just, like, in a tank for, like, one minute. And then he calls it off with ace, ace whatever, ace, ace, jack, deuce, single. And the chip leader shows something like nine, six, five, deuce, single suited. Right. Which is, like, it, it kind of makes me think. I'm not, I haven't, like, calculated that spot. But that's definitely one of those spots where you, you're, I'm not sure if you should stack off 30 bigs. When there's one guy with three bigs left and like the the chips he, lost are so much more worthy that's that's why it's so interesting though right because if what you're saying if it's like if did because you don't know how people are going to react so like really that guy with aces almost shouldn't be opening because if the right play is just a pot and he's supposed to fold like he should almost just be folding right like it's like or limping or like what, what no i mean it, the chip leader open so he has a decision to flat or fold or three bet well, that's what I'm saying. So it's, in theory, it's probably he should not be. He should never be three bet folding, though, right? Yeah, I think. I think. Yeah, but but so with that being said, is he? So what would you? What do you think there? You're saying that might that would be a spot. Where... I just lost you for a sec with the internet. Um, oh, yeah. But well, how would? Yeah. So what do you think the right the best play there is? I would probably call. Seems like I know this chip leader guy is is a cr- crazy guy who just like like he did like he put this guy into a test and uh, they were flipping like you know sixty forty for the 
for a huge pot in the bubble and it's it's I don't think you want to get it in there with 30 bigs with 60%. I don't think it's enough in the in the bubble spot, you know. Right. And 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 just to take it a step further, then we go to a flop. What would be a type of flop where you would just fold because he's assuming he's going to go for it on most boards and and obviously when you really nut your hand, but like let's what would be a what would be a spot where you may see the flop and then decide to fold when he leads out? Uh, what would be a board where you'd just be like, you know what, that, that would, that's not me. Where would be one where you'd kind of draw the cutoff on a dicey board? Uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's hard to say. There's plenty of boards uh, that we just need to fold and lose the three bigs. But then again, we're, we're in there with 27 bigs so and super li- likely to cash. And in, in the case where we three bet and he calls, there's going to be a lot of difficult spots with uh, the SPR of one. You know, he just pots when it's like, you know, King 10 deuce with a flush draw and we have just their aces. It's not going to be cool to, you know, get it in. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that too, the, 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 you know, the thing about Palomaroha, it's great. Cause it's a, it's, it is such a post-flop game. You know, you start talking about equities pre-flop, you can really jam it in and just, you know, whatever happens, but post-flop there's a lot of uh there's a lot of maneuverability with bet sizing and then reading and and, and it, it just it's just a it's a very cool game where no limit's great but it, it's also like it's just straight all in a lot of the time right it's like oh 30 blind shove like like here we go whereas plo it's like okay i can call and then i can sort of uh you know make some difficult decisions and, and hopefully make good ones yeah. um if uh if you had to look at this schedule, what excites you the most? Is it the PLOs of the 3200 main event? Or there's some other there's some other high roller stuff and different ones? What on the party poker WPT have you looked like that that stands out at you other than the uh, the main um, event? The 10K the... main event for sure. Uh, what what's the price point that I forgot? I think it's uh, the 20 no or 10 million guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's definitely the one, and also the PLO. Those two are gonna be my most. Actually, wait. It is a uh, yeah, ten million for the ten k. They have a twenty five k as well. How how do you equate uh, a live tournament to an online tournament in terms of buying? Because when you see like, look, I played plenty of ten ks, twenty five ks. I played a hundred k several times. I mean, they're big tournaments. Online, a ten k feels like a hundred k to me. What what do you <laughs> feel like the when I see the ten k fields? I'm like, man, I. This is probably I don't I don't know if I want to be in here right now. Right? I like I want to get in for a satellite, just feel a little better because it just seems like it's you know you're playing with the best of the best. So what's your calibration of online to live buy-ins? Do you have a formula? Because it does feel different. A thirty-two hundred online is it's a big tournament. No, I, I'm I think I'm kind of opposite. Like online, nothing really seems like it's it's not thirty-two hundred online. It's like doesn't feel too much, but live it's. It's fun. Like it's a good tournament, and I kind of take it more seriously. I would say, but yeah, I don't have a huge difference. But if I would get a pick, which is like, if it's the way you think or the other way, I think it's the other way for me. So you think you think uh, thirty two hundred on like live is is um, more difficult than a than online? I'm not saying it's more difficult, but it's kind of I might focus more. I don't know. It's interesting. I but mean, yeah, ten k, ten k online for sure is like, I don't know. It's just easy to you know click in and click a re-entry if needed. And live, you need to go to the cage and put yeah, in the no, cash no, no, or whatever. No, it's... Of course, I agree with you on that. No, it's it's less painful. And it's easier. It's quick, and it's sort of like all right. But and that, but I'm saying it's uh, in terms of like skill level, you know, thirty two hundred live oh, okay. online. Like I'm saying, what do you think the buy in? amount oh, like right. okay it's like like a 10k buying online is a tougher it's a pretty tough field generally that's why when you put a 10 million guaranteed it's an exciting tournament i mean you're talking about yeah there there is going to be some good value in there and uh it's a good opportunity but yeah i just think the level of skill is definitely harder and yeah in, for sure yeah all, all these 1k plus tournaments online seems to be super tough and yeah online tournaments that buy in uh sorry live tournaments that buy in are definitely like uh softer right yeah that's uh that's that's i think we can definitely agree on that well i what do you what gets you excited about the the upcoming i guess i would say the schedule but 
does this mean bigger cash gains for you? What is, when you see a series like this come up, does that how it translates? Because I'm so out of the cash gain online client cir uh, circle. Does this automatically make the games bigger? Like, is this going to be, while the tournaments are going, there's huge, there's much bigger games. What does that mean for you in terms of uh, cash games with these, with this two months coming up? Um, I wouldn't say there's any regularly, like, like huge cash games every night. For sure not. But, uh, there's for sure a higher chance that some random guy walks into the 500 PLO and the game is on. So yeah, given that it's, it's, uh, it's good times ahead for the high stakes PLO too. Cause there's always somebody, you know, super, uh, tilted from the tournament and they just click into the cash game tab and fire in some PLO. Yeah. I, I would say, uh, man, it's, it's just, it's really, it's interesting when you look at, when you look at, uh, when you look at tilt, I would say that PLO is a bigger tilt. Would you agree on that where for cash games? Cause like I'll see guys play PLO pretty solid and, and whatever. And then, you know, you get stuck a bit or lose a bad one and then you can really unravel. Maybe it's just cause the collisions are more and it happens more quickly, but it does seem like I, people's A and C games in PLO are way worse. Like a guy's A and C game and hold them. I just think like PLO people really get get on tilt. Is that is that a fair statement? Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah, it's like it's very easy to slip from a game. Like you can do just marginal losing call from the bottom. Let's say seven six four eight single suited, where you can just you know, it, it's it's not going to be like a big mistake by any means, but it's easy to make when you're going after your lose money or whatever. And then there's a squeeze, and then the the things escalate. You know. You call this, you first. You make a slightly loose call on the button, and then you call the squeeze, and then you might get a piece on the flop, and your stack is in. And how you know. how 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 would you rate? Um, is that is that? Would you say to a beginner in PLO, what's the what's like one of the, a few couple of just quick tips? Because that to me, I think that's the biggest thing I th see is people think, well, you know, I got five five nine ten or six six nine ten with ten nine suited. And, you know, I'll hit the flop or fold. But the problem is when you hit your set, you're oversetted. Uh, your straight draws are, you know, you get same kind of thing, right? You just get it put in weird spots. So is that is that the is starting hands more important almost than, than PLO than hold them? Just because, like, you can't really overcome uh, when there's multi-way pots and there's 4, 8, 12 cards, 16 cards available. You need a really strong hand. So is that is that – give me a couple tips on a new beginner to PLO, what, what they should avoid. Um, I mean, in PLO – I know there's a lot of like good looking hands that really aren't good, like double suited stuff with a uh, weak suits, you know, let's say queen jack four or five double suited might be like good looking hand for somebody. But uh, yeah, avoid some avoid hands like that, you know, try to play high suits and high pairs instead of like, uh, you know, weak suits and small pairs. And also like, I think uh, people, coming from no limit play their ace is like maybe too wild you know uh when you three but then there's an spr of three and a half people think that you know now they just need to get it in on pretty much any flop whereas like you know pair and a flush row is like you know a favorite against their hand and there's just a lot of a lot of uh situations like that where you where, where you see people playing too loose pre-flop and that gets them into a trouble post yeah, that exactly. I, I, that's so. My my tip would be just if, if you're unsure about the you know the brief of spot, just probably folding is the way to go, and uh, it's gonna save you from some trouble post flop. Yeah, and uh, I I think uh, I, I think that the the climate of cash games it's it seems like party's done some good things. What what to you has been some of the the nicer improvements in online cash games right now has there been has there been a shift where it seems like it's picked up a bit and again this is where i'm not an expert but in the last year covid's tough because that kind of changes everything right like i would imagine with covid there's been a spike in, in terms of action obviously but has there been a, a sort of resurgence of cash games online or is this uh something that that was sort of dead and, and is is back have you what have you noticed in the last year in terms of cash games and online poker um, I mean, the high stakes has been 
there was more games like a year, two years ago. So I wouldn't say high stakes PLO is doing well by any means. Uh, obviously, I, I think the real name uh, addition is super good for the high stakes. Uh, it's people just like to, you know, when they're playing for huge amounts of money, they they like to know who they're playing against, you know, and not just a random screen name and, you know. Um, also, the the, the rent once, uh, sorry, the rent twice is uh, is a great addition to the, especially the high stakes games like when Party Poker has a hundred big blinds, or actually now they have fifty big blinds uh, buying. But when they had hundred big blinds minimum buying and no run it twice, the game is just huge compared to other sites where you can buy in for twenty five bigs or whatever, and you can run it twice or three times. The game is just like multiple times bigger in Party Poker. But now it's now it's good when we have run it twice and uh, and. Uh, can buy in for 50 bigs for sure i'm looking here again at this site beast which is uh i like it i like the name i like that too I, what what is, is this uh is this a commercial shooter are these your friends is this like a a group of people you know or are these just is this like are you the model in this in this uh in this <laughs> group actually yeah that's that's the the main i mean there's few, two guys who are not uh or actually let me look at the photo yeah actually uh that's that's pretty much the group, uh, plus few few other guys. Uh, there's uh, Sampo, Elis, the JDS. Yeah, that's that's the crew. And uh, like I mentioned, uh, Elis before as uh, the best PLO player I know. He's he's the Which part of the that? beast. Here, uh, the guy with the bottle. With the bottle. Yeah. Nice. So uh, yeah, uh, he's he's part of the crew, uh, as you can see if you scroll down. It's the four of us as a uh, the main main guys in the crew. Uh, Sampo on the left is a PLO guy too. So if you feel you have a tough spot or tough hand history on your mind, you can post it in the forum and you can get a answer from the best. That's very cool. So you actually you will go on here and you this is where you click to see your blog or where can you read your your your. Um, uh... I don't have a blog right now, but uh. I might, uh, I might start writing. The guy on the right, the JDS, is the the blog guy, and there's actually a lot of stories uh, with me and Alice involved from our poker trips. Some cool stories. Oh, so he gambler you Actually, you can read on it here and see and and read some of the, the anecdotes and stories over. You got for, he's he's the one writing it, but it's about all of you guys. Yeah, pretty much. That's very cool. I I love it. I I'm a big. Uh, I respect a lot people. In poker, it's sort of, uh, you know, whether they start a coaching site or uh, information content, put together a website. I really, you know, I think it's great because it is, uh, it's fun. It's good to have sort of a, a journal or a documentary of what, document what you've gone through and, and do because it blends together. You start looking at Las Vegas in 2012. Like, I don't remember what I was doing. Like, where was I? What happened? What year? These tournaments blend together. A lot of the same stops, a lot of your friends and memories. So you know, I think that's cool when there's, uh, there's some content and documentation of it all. So I will, I'll definitely check it out. I want to, I want to, uh, I want to learn PLO a little more. I feel, I, I like PLO. I feel confident, but I know that in the uh, high stakes, you know, if I'm sitting down at a, a high stakes PLO table, a tournament guys aren't, aren't upset to see me in there. You know, I, I don't even want to see my notes um, in your, on your screen, but I, I like PLO. I actually, personally, I play a lot more cash. I like playing, uh, I played some pretty good stakes PLO games. I like with Annie, um, and, and just cash games, the tournaments I think are fun. I also am very aware there's a lot of work, right? There's a lot of studying. There's a lot of spots that are counterintuitive. Just even hearing you talk about a few of these aces spots on the bubble and things that's like, makes sense. But I just don't know in the moment, you know, it's hard to be like, Oh, like I have aces and you just feel like you're too yeah. tight or you feel like, you know, I'm already a lot trying of discipline. Not so tight and now I'm boy. At what point do I shift the switch and just accept that I need the cash? And what point do I go for it and try to be the the hero and uh I, I just think it's great and i i would love to uh i want to learn more so i'm i'm interested i might have to take you up on on some coaching or or look in the into the group uh, yeah the feel free poker. to yeah feel free to check the forum and there's some handy story threads and stuff that's awesome i'm definitely i'm definitely gonna do that well let's let's take a few questions we've got are you gonna play today do you have anything on the schedule you're taking it easy to the weekend uh no just a few days off before the saturday i think 
And so with the schedule being so late, it sort of, it does suck for tournaments, but I, I would imagine it allows you to have a nice routine. I mean, you basically have like the whole day, you wake up, you could work out, do your thing, organize your mind sharp. Like in some respects, I think that could be advantageous to people on North America who may roll out of bed and they're just like, all right, it's, uh, it's noon or 11. And like, I, it's time to play. I was up late and now I want to go play. So I, I think you do get that advantage. Is that, would you say something that's nice to be able to have, get your whole routine in and then fire, but it, it's just tough to be, go that late. Is that, I mean, what, yeah. what, if you could click a button, you would, you would much rather start at like noon, right? Or 11. Yeah. I would probably prefer like 4 PM starting or whatever, but like, yeah, now it's super tough. Like for example, right now I'm usually waking up 9 AM, 10 AM. And, uh, in a few days I would need to, go sleep at 7 a.m., which is kind of opposite. So it's, I, I start to prepare now a few days before the tournaments that, uh, that my, you know, body's ready for being up all night. And, you know, there's a lot of coffee needed for sure. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's tough too on your, on your, you said your girlfriend, you know, it's like, it's like she starts waking up when you're going to bed. It starts getting right. that, that uh, it's definitely, uh, it's sort of like, it's like a season. It's a sports, it's a season, these type of, but you got to rise to the occasion. There's only so many times where you get to have this much action jam packed, uh, uh online. So sure, yeah. uh, I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll collide. It'll be fun. And we we'll playing there. Let's, uh, let's hit some questions. Uh, we've seen a lot, so we are going to give away a $55 ticket courtesy of party poker. And I say Yoni, it's Yoni or Joni, Joni, Yoni, Yoni. Yoni, Yoni, I, I, yeah. okay, that's, I, I was, you want to try the, you want to try the last name? Um, yeah, we'll see. You did, gave me a, you gave me a little hint on it. Um, Joni, I'm sorry, Yoni, yo, nope. Do it one more time. Yo, <laughs> I'm not, I honestly, I like literally your name gives me, you're the only stressful name in poker. I think I literally can't even get it. <laughs> I can't even come close. Do it, do it for the, for your fans out there. Tell us how to do it right. It's so it's not like the the problem for me is like I get queued up, teed up to do it, and then I look at the first name, it's like kind of the same as the second, and then it's like totally different. So it's Yoni <laughs> Yoka Minen. Yeah, that, that's right, well done. We're gonna count it. We're gonna knock that. We're just gonna we're gonna go with that. That sounded good to me. Um okay, so you've answered a lot of these questions. We've covered a lot, but this was uh you've been with party poker for two and a half years, is that right? Yep. Um, you think PLO is more profitable in Texas Hold'em. Could you explain why that is? Or is that just because you personally are so versed in, in, in PLO? Or do you think that's a, if, if you were a grinder starting right now, you got to choose to go play online, no limit Hold'em or, or PLO, let's say $1, $2, which is more profitable? Uh, to be honest, I don't know like what the skill level right now is in the lower, lower stakes, but yeah. I would probably start from no limit since no limit gives you like solid background to start. Like if you want to switch to PLO and yeah, it's, it's hard to figure out what it would be to start from PLO since I, I started right. up from no limit. How, how different is the game at the, at PLO, let's say one, two and one, two, 100, 200. Um, let's just take that. Like if you were to go into the one, two games right now, like would it almost throw you off because the stuff would be you'd have to like shift into exploitatively more or you would you just absolutely annihilate at like a, like a crazier rate i mean how, how does that how does that work because the game's just different right you got you, like the bluffs certain bluffs won't work certain certain things they're different multi-way probably more than the other one so you know is it how would that how would you go in and approach that if you just hop down to like a one dollar two dollar two dollar four dollar would that almost be hard for you um good question again uh i don't think it'd be think hard, it. i love plo i'm just curious yeah. on some of the stuff i'm just sort of thinking about it as i go and it's interesting because it, it's like it's similar to no limit where that that's the case you know it's not the high stakes like you would think that the best players in the world would just hop down and just tear apart the, the smaller stakes which is probably the case but there could be some you know they, they you got almost like oh well i know i'm supposed to do this because it would make sense and it'll work but like a guy's not going to fold or you start leveling yourself. And and I'm just curious how that would, how do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, it's, I would say the game is looser in the, in the smaller stakes, even though it should not be since the like one, two, the rake is a big concern uh, compared to high stakes. Um, but yeah, you, I would need to step a little 
outside of the box and not play GTO po RP or post since I don't think the opponents will play either. So it would be a lot of exploitative plays. Um, well, where's the lot? No, oh. I need to go and That's running out of you know, light. the mic or the going out. We got, I can still see you. We can hear you and see you. Um, is the, is the, is the video fine or? Yeah, no, you're good. Okay, good. So yeah, where, where did we, where did we left? So you were, we were talking about the different stake, uh, different game size. Like if you go play 100, 200 or $1, $2, um, what the difference would be in how people would maybe combat that or how you would, uh, adjust to, um, to that. Um, Again, if there's like know. an example or maybe a spot or something that you think would just be different, like how you would approach it, would you raise, would you, would you raise, it just depends, I know, on the players too. It's not even necessarily the stakes, it could be a particular game, but just curious like as a tendencies, because you're not probably, you're not too informed in what they're doing at the one, two games, right? Like you're just not in the, you just have right, to yeah. figure it out. You'd watch a bit and adapt. But the thing is, I don't, I don't even know if there's, that's huge of a difference in like what, what like what, the guys who play regularly one two are probably like pretty good players too that are making money from one two since it's not that easy. So yeah, I'm trying to think what it, what even would be the biggest difference to the yeah. highest stakes. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I, I right. can't I can't figure out anything like that huge difference. Right. But so you you would assume you'd you'd have a similar win rate. Uh, or I mean, just you'd be you'd, you'd figure you do you would do well, but it's hard to say if it'd be like significantly different. Well, like take away the rake or included, just like beating the game um, at at the BBs per hundred. Um, what about sports? So hockey, you said not. Uh, but yeah, no, that... actually, one one thing one thing uh, popped up to my mind that would be different uh, is the four betting. Like in the high stakes, people who work with solvers and stuff know that like certain hands are like kind of mandatory four bets to balance your ace ace range you know uh ace nine six seven double suit is in many spots is a four bet uh and i don't think you like if you go and play one two plo people probably super rarely four bet uh you know that type of hands so yeah i think the four betting is probably so ace nine six seven double suited that's kind of like an ace four or an ace five suited wheel like that type of like block like, yeah yeah if you, if you compare it to no limit, it's like you want to block the ace and uh, you want to have the hand that is just pow powerful versus a four, like any hand, you know. And uh, yeah, hand like ace four, queen, queen. The the, the ace ace is a key factor when you when you start to build build your four bet range. Obviously, when you you want to make sure you block at least one ace. Right, makes a lot of sense um let's see a lot of lot a lot of similar questions about plo and why it's better why you like it more um oh someone's asking about that final table was there anything you would have done differently at that one you got third for 500k ept is there any hand that stood out or you, you think like you made a mistake or would it wish you would have shoved instead of called or, or made a bad like is there anything they regret or I, I guess not regret it's a bad word any anything you would change in that from that result uh, not really I, I watched the replay multiple times and i think i, I lost three three flips three big flips and uh one where i shot with like over a race 20 bigs with ace nine off and got called by ace 10 like pretty standard stuff so I, I don't think i've done i might have skipped a few drinks we had in the final table the guys who watched the final know that we we took two or three like uh Ilari took a few more he even took did some shots during the dinner break so he was like you know he's known to be a you know drinker and I I, I took a few but I'm not regretting I don't I don't think it affects my game right uh someone's asking about five card and six card I'm interested in that because this game I've seen a bit about I've, I've dabbled um uh I am curious. What do you is that? Are those games? Is there a lot of skill in those games, or at some point does it just come over? Like at that six card PLO, just seems insane. Like, what do you think on the five and six card PLO? I haven't played six card ever, uh, but I kind of the concept seems stupid. 
like I, I think it's just too much I mean I, I guess it's at some level it's like pretty like advanced game since you gotta think about the redraw I mean the redraws is you know the, the whole whole thing pretty much in the game the right. idea of the game but yeah five card PLO is kind of kind of uh, I played a lot of five card PLO and I like it a lot but in tournaments I, I think it's I think cash game is where the five card fits and it's not really that good of a tournament uh, format interesting very interesting yeah I, I six card I've played five not six as well I, I don't know I just seems like a game you really got to be dialed into and focused and it, it, yeah. yeah less it's like more it's 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 creative but it just seems like there's it's like a tur- it's like a crossing point of just a little too sick i heard there was like a new version of um yeah i think short deck or they were talking about putting back uh you know the whatever another so what you get rid of the the, the two three four five like maybe it's just the twos and threes or the fours or you know you could you adjust it either way it does make the game a bit different it also takes away sort of the solving and it, it recalibrates stuff so it, it makes it i mean that's the thing about poker i truly believe it doesn't really matter i think forever there's going to be poker you know is it, is it plo is it five cards at this game is it high load you get three cards can you redraw like there's just all these different variations end of the day people like to they like thinking games they like to have some gamble some skill some luck and competition so i, I don't think yeah. I don't think poker would be in, in really big jeopardy. I just think, yeah, it's no limit hold'em. You know, the game of choice forever. I yeah, I don't think so, but you know, uh yeah. Um uh so relationship with the finished poker pro is pretty strong. You guys have a good group, it looks like uh, the top players sort of uh find each other fit. Finland's not a huge place. Is that where most of the people are in Helsinki? What are some other areas that some of the, the poker guys live? Is there a couple pockets over the country of good players or is everyone sort of gravitate to Helsinki that that's serious about um that. yeah there's a couple of couple of spots but yeah most of us live in live in Helsinki gotta go there yeah Helsinki many. yeah maybe 10 percent of uh the Finnish popula- uh Finland's population is lives in Helsinki so you said 10 percent around yeah yeah big city for sure someone asking uh how are you someone says they have a 200 dollars bankroll advice on what tournament I should play I guess is it a shot take or is it uh you know which is the best value 200 but 200 bankroll what 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 uh what would you be saying to play i guess what what level buy-ins what's your bankroll rule do you uh, have one do you have like a a suggestion you need 50 buy-ins 100 buy-ins or do you just not even i mean that's sort of past i guess where you're at and and, and do you remember like growing and building your stake where you're like i don't want to take a risk above this amount with what i have to be honest i've always been pretty bad when it comes to bankroll management and uh because of that i went broke multiple times when i was like 18 to 22. uh but yeah i kind of learned my lesson and uh in, in cash games i kind of like that you have 100 buy-ins on my account when i play and tournaments uh what would be good for 200 bucks i to be honest i i don't have any any rule like that in tournaments i just i just fire if i feel like firing so yeah, maybe maybe at least hundred buy-ins would be fine for tournaments too. Uh, would you get noticed? Is it is it like a? Would you sit not like a celebrity, but are there people in Finland? Is it known? Is the poker community respected, regarded? Do people realize you guys kind of have like a, you know like you go out? Are people asking for autographs or notice you or say, hey, I've seen you do this? Is it is it very popular in in Finland poker? Um. Yeah, I would say Jeans and Ilari are, and Patrick Antonis are like the top three known people, and yeah, people definitely recognize them in the streets. Uh, I've always been kind of keeping the low key. Uh, I like the newspapers have asked for to put on the thing on their uh, on their uh, newspaper, and I kind of declined always. I, I don't want to. I've never wanted to be a celebrity or anything. I just wanted to, you know, play poker and be unknown. But obviously now with the party poker and uh, I've kind of had to make some noise about myself. So, yeah, some people know me and come ask for photos and the bars and stuff. It's, it's, it's fun, but it's, it's not like it's not happening that much. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, that's the right amount, right? It's fun. It's nice to get like, say, someone hello or chat on a stop to someone, but you don't want to be getting uh, getting stopped everywhere and slammed. So, 
Yeah, I think I think poker's yeah. sort of there's really not many people and I think poker's cool like that because you do get an occasional if you've been on TV or had a result or something, someone will notice you, but you're not like, you know, you don't have to hide. Uh Joe Hashim told me that it was like that for a bit. I mean, back in like the 03, 04 moneymaker Hashim when poker was super popular. It's a little different too in poker because a lot of times you're in a casino. Like in a casino, it's different, but getting stopped at a a Starbucks is a, is a little different. Um, what, what is your, all right, let's take this last one. What is your favorite place to go in the world? Doesn't have, give me, give me for poker stop. And then also for just travel leisure. I mean, only for poker, I would have to pick Vegas as it has just so many during the summer. It's just so many options to, to play. You can go fire some tournaments. You can go to Bellagio play some high stakes PLO, you, you just find a, any kind of game. So Vegas for sure. And what, if you had to pick live 200, 400, same lineup, same, same overall ability, is it, is it more fun for you to go to Bellagio? Would you rather be in there playing, touching the chips, or do you like a good game from the comfort of your home, 200, 400, all things considered, which is more fun and, and enjoyable for you online or live? I like live poker more. Uh, it's it's easy. Yeah, two hundred four live would be way much more excited exciting than playing online the same game. And yeah, that's okay. Uh, I think that's uh, I think that's a fair point. We have a lot of the same questions, guys. We do have a chance for you to win a fifty five ticket. Look at this, they're pouring in uh, some more questions. We do have as well. Um, I guess we'll take yes yeah, last one. Then we're gonna do the fifty five dollar where is the best plo game you know like area in the world to play like is there any secret games whether it's us in a private area you don't have to give specifically but is there any like juicy games you guys kind of like oh man that'd be nice if we could play in that game or i've heard about this <laughs> this thing is there is there a couple that stand out and again no specifics on names or who runs or but like is there any like areas of the world or, or stuff that you would say are, are known for that i don't think there's any re- like a uh, regular game that runs uh every anywhere uh there's been some good action uh, for a while there was there's was a lot of games on barcelona which was kind of one of my favorite stops but then like the good games turned into a private and i had no access pretty much the same in vegas they had like, last summer it was pretty bad since all the one two four games turned into a private um where else i mean here in finland we've had few like special nights with super high stakes and uh some businessmen willing to play so that's that's that was a great game too but i don't think there's any place in the world that has like a super special plo running on daily basis at least i don't know well you don't know because that no no one you're not a uh you're not a draw <laughs> man they don't want to see you at the table listen i got Playing I some guess. decent games. I mean, I like you. You're you seem like a great guy. I just, you know, I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna go out of my way to tag you into my into a <laughs> private home game, even no matter, you know, yeah. it's just it's tough, right? Actually, an interesting last point I want to touch on. Where do you stand on that private game invite? You know, obviously, as someone who's one of the best in the world, you're not just openly welcomed for obvious reasons because you're just gonna crush the people most likely in, in a lot of these games. So where do you kind of side on that? Like, it's not fair, but you get it and it's okay. Like, cause there's, you know, I've heard some arg debates about networking and this and that, but like, really, I don't want to answer for you. Where do you stand or how do you feel like this and, and the, these, this type of uh, private game stuff and, and do you get it and understand it? Or is it like, man, this is so wrong. Like, how can this be? It doesn't make sense. First come first serve. Where, where do you stand? I mean, obviously it sucks, but uh, I, I get it. And uh, especially like, I mean, if I would have a private game here in Finland, I would definitely invite like my best friends, even though like I would consider Alice as the best. He would be, you know, welcome to my game. I wouldn't think as like it as an EV loss when he joins the game, nothing like that. But I get it when, when there's a game like in Vegas and some guy I semi know, you know, it's like you're you're not you don't have a seat here i, I get it it's like it's their business and yeah i respect yeah. it for sure makes sense um and and uh, what about tournaments when do you what about swapping staking do you deal do you do any staking stuff do you have any when you play in some of these bigger events are you doing swapping do you have uh backers do you take your own action or, or make a combination just depending 
Um, mostly just swapping in the high stakes. I, I haven't. I, I've sold some if if the buy-in is like the 50k buy-ins and so, so. But usually just swapping. And uh, yeah, I've done a lot of backing, and uh, I have two guys that I'm backing plus coaching for for this year. And uh, it's it's fun to have some projects going on, see guys improving, and obviously like it could turn out to be like really profitable if i if i coach and back some guy but mostly it's just helping helping a friend right yeah it's cool it's fun that's just sort of where i'm at it's fun if it's uh, your good friends and you want to kind of learn and grow together and plus it's nice you know staking's a lot of work and dealing with stuff but if you trust them you're your friends yeah. and then they get you know i'd say it's great if they hit a big run sometimes it's nice right you get you get to relax the day off and they're oh i'm I'm chip leader with 30 left in a big score. It's, it's, it's a fun mix. So, um, that's cool, man. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, Yoni, I really, this has been fun, man. I appreciate your time. I, I, like I said, I, I, one of the guys that I hear a lot about, I don't, we haven't had a chance to, uh, to, to know each other very well. I hope on a future stop, hopefully live in uh, post COVID times, we'll, we'll have a beer and, and have a good time on some of these amazing party poker stops, uh, that for sure. Are, who knows when that's going to happen but um yeah plo I, I definitely want to take a look guys check out the beasts of poker that is a, a site you can see some content some some blogging going on and also there's going to be learn poker there will be some coaching and stuff for again you heard it out of yoni's mouth they say the man is the best or one of the best <laughs> for sure and uh you could put a, i think a few of these these other guys in the in the conversation all here so very cool nice site um love it and uh let's let's roll this this uh, $55 ticket. Hopefully someone parlays it into a big win. So you tell me when and we will roll it. No. Right there. RNG coming. Someone's got a $55 tweet. Let's see who it's going to be. Maybe a repeat winner. I swear some people some people can hack these things. There's multiple winners. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not. I'm on to them. I'm on to the multiple winners. Let's see if this guy doesn't. Don't think he's won before. He's wearing a Steelers jersey. That's not my favorite. But I will. Uh, he is going to win the ticket nonetheless uh and any closing words give me some give me a set you're, you're known you're known as like Kawhi leonard i feel like in poker you're kind of quiet everyone's like says he's the nicest guy you're pretty laid back give me like a give me a message to send us off today in the, in the world with what's going on and just you know something to, to keep your head up and be positive and it can be a little bit of a, a crazy you know it's it's tough out there no one really knows there's a lot of uncertainty give me something you give us a closing statement i'm putting you on the spot today that's what it's about i want you to change oh, the, world, this is the final the spot yes i'm not prepared to this spot uh <laughs> you gotta help me all right um give me something that you could do uh give me like a suggestion or a tip on a daily basis that you could uh learn for an improvement thing whether it's a language or like just something that's cool a meditation a book like, give me, give me a tip or something you're doing to be productive in this COVID time. Uh, oh, I, all I, all I uh, learned during this time is like, when you, when you like prepare well to the session and, or whatever you do, you just make sure you, you've had a good sleep and eat well and you prepare to do something. It doesn't really hurt when you fail since you just like, let's say a poker session I've learned like. There's been sessions I, I lost huge amounts, but when I look look backwards and I, I see that I, I prepared well and I, I, you know, did stuff professionally, I just I'm just fine with it. But when there's times that you you've done stuff kind of, you know, uncautiously and uh, not you know, taking it too carefully and you end up losing, then you start thinking like, why did I do that? And so just whatever you do, make make sure you you're well prepared, and especially in poker, you you want to be there 100 percent and not just play when you're a little bit sleepy or you know some some other things bother your mind. You but you got to be ready out there, and yeah, that's probably that's my message. I, I couldn't agree with you more, and I will say, I, like for me personally, I can't tell you for all the Sundays. I mean, I, I try to play, you know, if I'm able to where I am, I, I try to play the majority of Sundays. There's so many times, and, and that's interesting. I've never heard it put like that, but I, I would utter the same sentiment because a lot of Sundays don't go well or you don't have your dream Sunday, but the times where you were up early, you had your coffee, you were meditating, you're fresh, you're, you're dialed in, you're, you're really at your best. Like then, it, yeah, it doesn't even matter if you feel like you had a losing day, you're kind of like, all right. But like the days where you just, you just, uh, you just kind of roll out of bed or you're like just getting in there and you're sort of haphazard, you're tired right. and you're not alert. Like then it's like, it, it goes bad. You're kind of like, man, I'm a, I'm a, 
you know, you don't feel good. You really don't. You're like, that was totally a waste. Like I could have done so many things differently. It was in my control. Um, and I, I think that's powerful. And I think especially it's easy that I've noticed in these series, like this coming up on party poker, it's a long, there's a lot going on. If you come into it and you're already tired and you're already a little tilted or not at your best, you know, yeah. you can really dig yourself into a hole to sort of get, get focused. If you come in, right. you're, you're prepared. Like you said, you're already planning. It's not just the night before you're getting your sleep ready. You're getting it situated. You know, then you're, then you're in a, a rhythm where you have a, a much better chance of success and, and you're taking control of, uh, you know, luck is when preparation meets opportunity and you want to be as, as prepared as you can for sure. So I, I think, uh, yeah, that's great advice. And uh, again, I really appreciate it. Look forward to chatting live more and uh, I will be keeping an eye on the website and, you know, l listen, uh, 400 hours seems like a bargain. So for multiple sessions, I may have to be, you may be giving me your Venmo PayPal soon and taxing <laughs> you for some, uh, some PLO lessons. I think I could, I know I don't want, don't, you know, just wink, but I think, I think, you know, I got a little work I could do for sure. We could tighten up our, t maybe not tighten up's the right word. We could tweak we can make some adjustments in our PLO game. So uh, I, I look forward to maybe chatting. If you're open for that, I'd be up for that. And uh, thanks again. I really appreciate it. Yeah, sure. No problem. It's fun. All right, guys. That was Yoni. And his last name, we heard it earlier. You can rewind it. I'm not going to try it again. But member of Team Party Poker, he sponsored. Regards, one of the best PLO players in the world. We appreciate his time from Helsinki. He's there. And he will be at the tables during these six, seven weeks of action, almost a month really on WPT and Party Poker, 100 million in guarantees. Uh, I hope you guys are at the tables. I hope you get to say hello and best of luck. And again, Yoni, thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Yeah, no problem. Take care. Cheers, man.